Welcome to the math lecture series of class 11. We shall continue with our chapter linear inequalities. By now, we have learnt about solving linear inequalities in one variable and expressing the answer in different forms. Today, we shall learn about solving simultaneous linear inequalities in one variable, some more real life applications of linear inequalities in one variable, introduction to linear inequalities in two variables and graphical representation of linear inequalities in two variables. Solving simultaneous linear inequalities in one variable. Let us take up a question. 5 multiplied by 2 x minus 7 minus 3 multiplied by 2 x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0 and 2 x plus 19 is less than or equal to 6 x plus 47. We have to find the common solution of x for these two inequalities. Solving these two separately, first inequality gives us 10 x minus 35 minus 6 x minus 9 is less than or equal to 0, 4 x minus 44 is less than or equal to 0 or 4 x is less than or equal to 44 or x is less than or equal to 11. And on solving the second inequality, we get 2 x minus 6 x is less than or equal to 47 minus 19 or minus 4 x is less than or equal to 28 or x is greater than or equal to minus 7. Now, since we are solving these two simultaneous linear inequalities in one variable, we have to find the common solution for both the inequalities. Let us plot these on the number line. When we plot x greater than or equal to minus 7, it will look like as shown in the figure and x less than or equal to 11 will point towards the left hand side. Now, since both the inequalities are with the equality, therefore, we have colored circles in both the inequalities represented on minus 7 and 11. The arrowhead of the inequality from minus 7 points towards the right hand side and the arrowhead on 11 points towards the left hand side. The common solution for both is depicted by the figure as shown between minus 7 to 11. Hence, the solution is minus 7 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 11 or in set form all those x such that x belongs to r minus 7 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 11 and in interval form x belonging to close interval minus 7 to 11. Let us take up some more real life applications of linear inequalities in one variable. The marks obtained by a student in his two unit tests are 30 and 25 respectively. How many marks should he score in the third test to get an average score of at least 35 marks? Now, let us suppose that the third test's mark score be x. Therefore, x plus 30 by plus 25 upon 3 should be greater than or equal to 35. Therefore, x plus 55 upon 3 is greater than or equal to 35 or x plus 55 is greater than or equal to 105 or x is greater than or equal to 50. Hence, the answer that the student should score at least 50 marks to get the desired mean. One more example, a man wants to cut 3 lengths from a single piece of board of length 91 centimeter. The second length is to be 3 centimeters longer than the shortest and the third length is to be twice as long as the shortest. What are the possible lengths of the shortest board if the third piece is to be at least 5 centimeters longer than the second one. Now, let us try and solve the problem. Since the relation in the first sentence are given in terms of the shortest board, so we assume the shortest length to be x centimeters. Therefore, let the length of the shortest board be x centimeters and given conditions now, which says that the second length is 3 centimeters longer than the shortest. Therefore, length of second board is x plus 3 centimeter and the second condition now says that 
the third length is twice as long as the shortest. Therefore, the length of the third piece would be 2x. So, by the given conditions now, which says that the available length of the board is 91 centimeter, we get x plus x plus 3 plus 2x should be less than or equal to 91. That is, 4x plus 3 is less than or equal to 91 or 4x is less than or equal to 89 or x is less than or equal to 89 by 4 or x is less than or equal to 22.25 approximately. That is, x is less than or equal to 22 as we have to consider x as a natural number. The next condition says that the third piece is to be at least 5 centimeters longer than the second one. Therefore, 2x is greater than or equal to x plus 3 plus 5. That is, x is greater than or equal to 8. Therefore, the possible lengths of the shortest piece as desired by the question are greater than or equal to 8 centimeter and less than or equal to 22 centimeters. Next, we move on to linear inequalities in two variables. If you go to the market to buy some pens and pencils, let the cost of a pen be say rupees 10 and the cost of pencil be rupees 4. If you have the available money with you as rupees 25 suppose, find the possible number of combinations of pens and pencils to be bought if we have to spend the maximum amount of money that you have. Let us suppose x pens and y pencils have to be bought. By the given conditions, we have 10x plus 4y is less than or equal to 25 because 10x would be the cost of pens you buy and 4y will be the cost of the pencils you buy. The amount you have planned is rupees 25. Therefore, 10x plus 4y is less than or equal to 25 governs my purchase. Let us tabulate this data now. The first column depicts pencils, third column depicts pens, fourth column depicts amount spent on pens and the fifth column depicts the total amount spent on the pens and the pencils together. So, if I buy zero pencils, the amount spent obviously is zero. Since each pen costs rupees 10, so I can buy two pens worth rupees 20 because I have 25 rupees in hand. If I buy one pencil, I spend rupees 4, I still have enough amount in my hand to spend for two pens. So, if we tabulate this data, we observe that we can buy 0 to 6 pencils and 2 to 0 pens as shown in the data here. Now, keeping in mind that if you have to buy at least one pen and one pencil and that you need to spend the maximum amount you have. The only possible option as can be seen from the table is one pencil and two pens. Now, let us represent the inequalities in two variables graphically. Recall the plotting of linear equation in one variable on a graph paper. Suppose you have to plot the equation 5x plus 3y is equal to 30. For that, we have to find the x and y intercepts. So, if we put x equal to 0, y is 10 and when we put y equal to 0, x will be 6. Therefore, 0 comma 10 and 6 comma 0 will be the two points lying on the line 5x plus 3y is equal to 30. Note that any vertical line will divide the plane into two parts, the left plane and the right plane as can be seen here in the figure and any non-vertical line will divide the plane into two parts the upper plane and the lower plane as can be seen from the graph here. Considering the same equation 5x plus 3y is equal to 30 and considering the points 1, 1, 4, 2 and 3, 4, observe that these three points lie in the lower left plane and therefore, they would satisfy the inequality 5x plus 3y is less than 30. The points 8, 1, 6, 4 and 7, 6 lie in the upper half of the plane and therefore, satisfy the inequality 5x plus 3y 
is greater than 30. Now, consider the points 0, 10, 6, 0 and 3, 5. These points lie on the line and therefore, satisfy the equation 5 x plus 3 y is equal to 30. We first plot the equality 5 x plus 3 y is equal to 30 as mentioned earlier. Now, to find out which part of the graph has to be shaded, we choose a point on the plane which does not lie on the line. For our convenience here, let us choose the point 0, 0. Substitute the point 0, 0 in the inequality and check whether we get a true or a false answer. So, 5 into 0 plus 3 into 0 is less than or equal to 30, that is 0 is less than or equal to 30, which is true. Therefore, we shade that part of the plane which has the point 0, 0 and hence we shade the lower left part of the plane. Suppose after substituting the point, the inequality came out to be false. In that case, we shade the opposite part that is the part of the plane which does not contain that point. Now, let us see what happens when we have 5 x plus 3 y less than 30. The procedure remains the same. The only difference is the line 5 x plus 3 y equal to 30 will not lie in our required answer. Therefore, the convention is we draw that line as a dotted line and shade the rest of the region as before. In a similar manner, 5 x plus 3 y is greater than or equal to 30 has to be plotted. We plot the line 5 x plus 3 y is equal to 30 and choose a point on the plane which does not lie on the line that is say for example, 0 comma 0. So, 5 into 0 plus 3 into 0 is greater than or equal to 30, 0 is greater than or equal to 30 is obviously false. So, we shade the opposite part which does not have this point that is the upper part of the plane. As before, 5 x plus 3 y is greater than 30 will have a dotted line for 5 x plus 3 y equal to 30 and the shading remains same as before. Consider the inequalities x greater than or equal to 2 and x less than or equal to 2. We have a vertical line at x equal to 2 and x greater than or equal to 2 consists of the right plane and x less than or equal to 2 consists the left plane. Same is the case for y greater than or equal to 2 and y less than or equal to 2. The greater than or equal to 2 inequality will have the upper plane and the less than or equal to 2 inequality will have the lower plane. Now, consider the inequality x greater than or equal to y. Note that 0, 0 lies on the line, therefore, we cannot use 0, 0 to decide the portion which has to be shaded. We choose some other point say 1, 0 and check. Substitute 1, 0 in the inequality x greater than or equal to y. This gives us 1 is greater than or equal to 0, which is true. Therefore, we shade that part of the plane which contains the point 1, 0 and hence the lower part. In a similar manner, if we have the inequality x less than or equal to y and we substitute the point 1, 0, we get the false answer and therefore, we shade the portion which is on the left hand side of the line that is the upper part. So, we have learnt how to plot the linear inequations in two variables on the graph. We shall in the next episode learn how to plot and solve simultaneous linear inequations in two variables on the graph. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.